about Bonet. And this one, I think, is one of his senses of humor. Did he have humor? I, I guess so from this article. Pilgrim Brother Wisdom reports a rumor throughout the Middle West that Pilgrim J.A. Bonet is dead. I'm requested to affirm that we deny the report. It affords me much pleasure to be able to state to all the friends of the truth and to all mankind that the rumor is correct. I am dead. Dead to the world. It's vanity and allurements, but very much alive to the interests of Christ's and his cause of righteousness and truth. So he did take a rumor and, and turn it around for at least a good story of being dedicated to Christ. In the Golden Age, there was an article written about the Klan. In the uh, New Era Enterprise for February 8th, 1921, Rutherford says, During World War I, the IBSA were badly treated in Oklahoma, but not by these countrymen. Some of them, after the lecture, asked Brother Bonet, what is the attitude of the IBSA towards the Ku Klux Klan? Brother Bonet replied he didn't know much about the Ku Klux, but was watchfully waiting to see what the attitude of the Ku Klux is toward the IBSA and that the Golden Age had recently published an article about that organization which so pleased the officials of the Ku Klux Klan that they republished the Golden Age article in their own literature. <laughs> now, this is something I did not know. This this yeah, is but, new to me. Mm. I've never heard this one. <laughs> and this, this, this uh, is good. drawing, this drawing, this is, this is from the Golden Age article. Uh, so the Klan... <laughs> I never heard this one. This is amazing, Jeff. What, it's what because Bonet was linked to this this statement. It is just absolutely bizarre. So the society has links to the KKK now. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they, they didn't endorse it. I'm just being you. No, no, they, here. they didn't endorse it because they say, quit trying to scare people with gowns, sheets, and hoods. But on the contrary, I make a vigorous attack on the power causing the evil on our land and other lands. That is to say, big business, the controllers of the destinies of men and women generally, who exercise control and power in the most dastardly manner. The and, class and if, that has and, and the class that has wrought about the very things which you profess to rectify. They were against the Catholic Church, so that's the reason why they're mentioned in the Golden Age, basically, because they were very anti-Catholic and anti-Jewish later. And you can't even hold Rutherford accountable for what the KKK <laughs> chose to think was was a good thing. <laughs> You know they didn't endorse it, um, but it is it is humorous. I find it humorous to say the least. Even worse, in Canada, they had their own radio station in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, C H U K, where the call symbols, and that's the radio station there, and some photos from inside the radio station. So here's a book on air radio in Saskatchewan by Wayne Schmalls, and in it it says. Saskatoon's second station, run by the International Bible Students Association, opened in 1924. Basically, they tried to shut the radio down, and this is a little bit of the stories in this book on air, Radio in Saskatchewan. In January 1927, the Saskatoon Board of Trade requested that the Bible student station be prohibited from preaching sermons over the airwaves except on Sunday. Yet this event was not important. A letter in the Saskatoon Daily Star showed that the Board of Trade did not support its subcommittee, and ten numerous letters and petitions were signed by non-Bible students, indicated that the station's sermons were reasonably popular throughout Saskatchewan. So they were trying to shut down the station. Why? So in Penton's book, one of his, his first books, and this was written when he was still a Jehovah's Witness, and I've talked to him recently, and he said, you know, this, this could stand to rewrite, because he was just trying to defend the society back at that time. And a lot of this also got incorporated into and updated in Apocalypse Delayed, which is not completely favorable to the society, of course, but it tries to be accurate to the history and the documentation. So in, in his book, Penton says, on January 7th, 1927, the radio director for the Department of Marine and Fisheries sent a memorandum to Alexander Johnston claiming that the radio station Watchtower radio station Chuck was in trouble again. He went on to tell his superior about the Ku Klux Klan programs, which he stated had been investigated by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and reported to the police to the department by them. So basically, they were selling time to other people and they were selling radio time to the Ku Klux Klan in Canada. And then the Ku Klux Klan broadcast their programs through Watchtower's radio stations. This is all new to me. This is, yeah, I never, I never 
read or heard this. This is, this is good. <laughs> so, so it's basically like the neutrality. If we can make a buck, we don't care who we make or sell to or for. Yeah. And, and again, it's, again, that change of perspective of when do they watchtower really become money makers? Here's a real good example of that is during that Rutherford regime, right? Well, they perfected it in the Nazi regime after the KKK. Yeah. So yeah. as we as we've shown from I, I thought it was all rumor. I've mm -hmm. have heard that the society was a little tied to the KKK, um, but I never found any really documentations personally. So I I, I assumed it was rumor, but based on this. Uh, if they were selling radio time, <laughs> you know, that, that is an affiliation, whether you want to call it one or not. Yeah. It's a ridiculous organization. It shows some of that racist background uh, that I think Watchtower had not only were, uh, you know, the racism of, of the Ku Klux Klan, but they're very anti-Semitic statements they got into in, in following years. And you could see a little bit of that in our discussion, our neutrality discussion that we had recently. Uh, in the New Era Enterprise of July 1926, Bonet shows how much of a yes man he was for Rutherford. And he, he talks about this sheep and the goats parable and this change that Rutherford made. And he says, the article says, Brother Bonet clearly showed that the parable of the sheep and goats could not possibly apply to the end of the millennial age but applies now at the beginning and so the, we're judging sheep and goats now i went to prison it's all about me that's the discussion we had on judge rutherford judges sheep and goats and the whole history behind that and, and once Bonet again, back me that. with the psychology of it it, it just doesn't say the parable couldn't apply doesn't apply to it, it to the millennial age it applies you know it could not possibly apply no. you know it's how you choose your wording is if they're trying to influence the opinion not tell you you know tell you the opinion not not convince yeah. you it, it's just the wording it has always gotten me with, with publications from them uh, and and to try and wrap up a little bit of Bonet's life uh, we're getting to the towards the end of it in the 1925, March 3rd, 1925, New Era Enterprise. Uh, it shows, again, how much Bonet was of a yes man. He did everything he can to promote and protect his friend Rutherford all the time. So <clears throat> we had this discussion about what Bonet did during our discussion on the history of the two witness rule. And here, here we come back to it again. Because... He, instead of defending the Matthew 18 scriptural position about the two witness rule, Bonet defends his friend Rutherford instead. And it, how it, Rutherford was trying to get away from that rule. And, and so. And, and how, once again, why we cover these things in the order we do with the characters involved, we're painting the picture for what, what really evolved into the modern day and, and we're hopefully our viewers will understand that is, is by the time we get near the doctrinal discussions it, it it's interesting to see how all these characters intertwine and interact with each other and how these doctrinal changes and changes in the society and these events happened and how they all tie into each other and more importantly why so if you want to know why, go check out that previous discussion. It's a very interesting thing. But here in this article, Bonet says, it says, uh, Brother Bonet has been in our midst several days and is rendering a goodly service in the matter of judging the brethren, according to Matthew 18, 15 to 17. The directness of the statement to eschew all gossipy things and go straight to the party offended and register the complaint with no intent to make him guilty or appear so, but rather to win back the brother? While the writer was not present at the public meeting at Tiffin, the report was said that all available space was taken and many books sold. Back to Bonet being a, a bookseller again. The whole point of, of this change was 
exactly how Watchtower thinks today. Don't be a busybody. Stay out of my affairs, especially if we're in the leadership role or taking the lead in the organization. And that's was Rutherford's opinion. I'm taking the lead in the organization. Don't bother me with this stuff. I don't care about your two witnesses. He avoided it at all costs. So see, again, our discussion on the two witness rule. So in the Proclaimers book, Bonet is mentioned, and it again shows his yes man, defend Rutherford at all costs uh, attitude again, as you're describing. In this article on the birth of the nation, and, and we're going to do a deep dive in, into this too in the future. The Proclaimers book it says that here Rutherford applies the lightnings, the voices, the thunderings as evidence of the new light he was sharing. Okay, so the article on the birth of the nation was difficult to take hold of because of a previous interpretation of Brother Russell, which we believe to be the final word on Revelation. Little wonder then that some stumbled over the explanation. Unquestionably, Bonet says, Bonet says, unquestionably, this interpretation may prove a sifting medium. But the really earnest and sincere ones of the faith will stand firm and rejoice. So Bonet's stating this to defend his friend Rutherford and to sell more books. We know that this article, Birth of the Nation, ended up in the reprinting of The Finished Mystery. So they republished The Finished Mystery. They ripped out the Ezekiel part because of our discussion on the man who dared disfellowship Rutherford. Make sure to check that one out. And they replaced a section of the book with this article. And, and the question is why, right? And even from back in Bonet's day, if you look at the wording, every time they change and go to a new light, people question and they call it a sifting. Well, we're, now we're going to sift and, and <laughs> weed out who really are, are the true followers of Christ. Well, what mental effect is that going to have on people? Uh, yeah, I, you, you're telling them, okay, <laughs> if, if I don't follow, I'm being sifted, and now I'm not part of Christ. And then one of the examples they always give that, always, that, that has got me um, humorous to me is with Moses and, and Dathan, how they always compare th those who don't follow Moses as the Dathan-like class. And how many were sifted in the 1920s when that statement was made? How many were sifted in how 1970? How many were sifted in, yeah, but in 1925, when Bonet makes this statement, this article is going to be a sifting article. How many stayed true to the society? How many stayed with the society? Over 75% left, as we've seen in our previous discussions. 75%. Yeah. That's quite a sifting rate. <laughs> so here in the messenger at the Toronto convention in 1927, you could see a picture of Rutherford there in the center and Bonet is to his, uh, is to the right of him with a little child in his lap. And it says, uh, take a look at Bonet fathering some little boy. In, in the article, it says brother J a Bonet has made my brother a kite and is helping him to fly it. So at least it seemed like he got along well with children and he played with them and, and did things with him. So that gives a little, you know, we've been pretty negative on him. That gives a little nicety to, to the man's character. In the September 1st, 1983 Watchtower, Bonet is mentioned. And it, there's, you know, somebody's life story. And it says, J.A. Bonet made a particular impression and was of special help to me. He was a man who had characteristics that endeared him to some people, but had the reverse effect on others. We could see that from some of the things that he had done. He loved Jehovah and evidently was modest, but kept his qualities somewhat concealed under a gruff exterior. We don't see much of Bonet after the mid-1920s. mid, mid -1920s. We see a little bit here and there, but towards the end of the 20s and early 30s, the only time we see anything from Bonet is when a new book comes out. And being the salesman he was, he writes in a wonderful review of Rutherford's new book each time. So we, we have an example of that here in the January 1st, 1928 issue. And it's about Rutherford's new book, Creation. And it was beautifully illustrated. In the February 1st, 1931 issue, Bonet writes in again, and it's about light. Light was Rutherford's new commentary on Revelation. 
And thank goodness this light was new light to help us understand Revelation because we didn't understand it before. So I guess the finished mystery on Revelation wasn't quite a finished mystery. And the April 1st, 1931 also was another article by Bonnet stating, you know, what a wonderful vindication of Almighty God. Light is destined to be when all shall have come to know him from the least to the greatest. And and I like how Bonnet talks about uh, the book. Uh, how does he say? Brother Rutherford could not have improved on the book Life except by divine supervision. Yeah. And, and where did he write it? Beth Serene. Another discussion for another time. A good place to write. You, you yeah. all need a writing retreat. Yeah. Boy, that boy definitely did not have writer's block. Bonet died in 1932, one year later. And that's his death certificate there. Uh, he died in Michigan. Uh, he didn't see what became of Rutherford and the society, where the society was headed. He got a little inkling of it, what his opinions were on the doctrine. Was he completely a yes man? It looks like from the evidence we've seen. Would he have questioned some of the things that happened later and left the movement like many of the others did? It's hard to tell. He died right at the time these things were happening and right, right before the Second World War, right before what happened to the society in Nazi Germany and I other directions think, Rutherford I, I was taking society. My personal opinion is I think based on evidence and documentation we've shown, he probably would have stayed. I think so, yeah. An opinion. And, yeah. And uh, it, it, it was definitely an interesting discussion. Uh, we can see what kind of character Bonet was. He had a lot of bright ideas, not necessarily as bright as he thought they were. Uh, he was trying to make money for the society in multiple ways. Uh, but this Miracle Wheat scheme was his child, his, his, his idea. And it didn't go well for the society or for Russell or Rutherford, uh, based on the evidence that we've seen. And it seems uh, that it wasn't Russell who was really concerned about making money. As much as it was everybody else worried about yeah. making money for the society. And why, you know, why was that? And you see a lot of times, I think Russell surrounded himself with people who took advantage of him. You know, we could get $100,000 if we sue the Brooklyn Eagle. That worked out well for them, I guess. You know, <laughs> what if we sell miracle wheat? You know, can you put a little thing in there and I'll, I'll take care of it all for you? They had that same kind of money making mentality and look what became of of them and what became of the society today interesting discussion jeff i yep, think i learned a little bit on this one myself we we promised some a deep dive on on miracle wheat and and here it is we uh and again this was a listener suggestion and we have some other listener suggestions that we're going to look at soon so like and subscribe make sure to click the little notification bell so that when a new video comes out, you'll get it right away. And thank you for watching. Keep reading, keep studying, keep researching. God bless. Thank you again, Paul. This has been a very fascinating discussion. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave some comments. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Get a whole story, not just from the Watchtower's perspective, but from all the various splinter groups. What, what were they saying? So until next time, keep reading.